the revenue was spent. So with that, Mr Chair, I thank you. Uh, point of order, uh, Jamie Lee Ross. Uh, Mr Speaker, I raise this point of order because earlier in the night you ruled out an amendment to clause, uh, an amendment in Denise Lee's name. It inserts a new clause 12. I ask that you hear this point of order because there will be other SOPs that seek to insert new clause 12 uh, amendments as well. My understanding and discussions with staff in the building is that one of the reasons why this SOP was ruled out is because it incorporates an amendment to another piece of legislation, um, in this case the Education Act, and just for ease of understanding, in this case the amendment in Denise Lee's name would have uh, made some changes to section 139D, which would have provided a requirement for the Ministry to take an action in response to the regional fuel tax legislation, and in this case it's around school transport. There are other SOPs that are going to be coming along which will make amendments to other, other acts as well that we're wanting to put forward. I don't believe, Mr Chairman, uh, it would be right on a wholesale basis, and, and I anticipate this may be a consideration you're giving, I don't believe it would be accurate to, on a wholesale basis, say any SOPs that seek to insert a new Clause 12 that incorporate another piece of legislation that is not already in the bill, I don't believe that would be the right decision. Because I submit to you, Mr Chairman, that Part 2 already does include amendments to other pieces of legislation that are not required to make the regional fuel tax scheme workable. For example, Mr Chairman, Part 2 include some amendments to the Local Government Act around reporting. If the argument was that it must be an a amendment in Part 2 that is required to make Part 1 work, if that was the argument, then I think that could be a basis for ruling out SOPs. But in fact, we already have in Part 2 a particular proposed change to a piece of legislation that is not required to implement the Regional Fuel Tax Scheme because reporting doesn't, is not required for implementing the scheme. So I submit to you, Mr Chairman, it is in order for members of parliament to put in, uh, forward SOPs which seek to amend other pieces of legislation if it can be related to the regional fuel tax scheme as the proposed amendments in the minister's name already seek to do. And because we have the ability, Mr Chairman, uh, to consider issues related to a regional fuel tax scheme, um, such as the local government amendments, we should have the ability to put forward other amendments and other SOPs which seek to amend other acts of parliament, because those are legitimate debating points about consequential issues that may arise that can be linked back to the regional fuel tax scheme. I don't believe part two, as it's currently drafted in the bill, solely contains issues that must be addressed to make a regional fuel tax scheme workable. There are other issues that are superfluous but are related to the regional fuel tax scheme. We should also have the ability to put forward amendments that, while superfluous uh, to making a regional fuel tax scheme workable, are still worthwhile of debate. And I submit to you, Mr Chairman, when you give consideration to making rulings on future SOPs that we put forward or may have already put forward, you give consideration to the fact that the bill already contains matters very, very similar to what Denise Lee proposed and was ruled out and what other members may be proposing as well. Um, Chair? Uh, Kiri Tapu, Ellen. Uh, thank you, Mr Chair. Sir, the, um, uh, our member opposite is effectively trying to uh, draw out a debate on a very tightly uh, no. considered... In the hall. In the hall. No, I don't need any that kind of help, thank you. Um, I want to thank the member for bringing this um, um, issue to my attention, the way that um, he sees it. Uh, the reason why I ruled that particular um, uh, amendment out was based on that I, th I believe that it um, should have been part of part one, not of part two, um, and that... Um, <laughs> and as um, um, a rebate, it, it, um, uh, it should not be part of part two. However, 
Uh, I'm going to take some further advice and come back to uh, the committee. Um, uh, it may be a situation where I just uh, allow uh, the committee to be the master of its own destiny um, and make that decision for itself uh, through a vote. But um, I'll take further advice on that. Point of order, Jamie Lee Ross. Thank you for giving consideration to the issue. May I make one further submission that I hope may be helpful? Uh, whilst uh, the proposal from Denise Lee um, could, one could argue, uh, go into part one, we in fact are restricted, were restricted by part one, given that part one is amendments to the Land Transport Management Act. The way in which this bill has been drafted, it effectively has two parts. One is all of the changes to the Land Transport Management Act, and part two is all of the changes to any other act. Given that Denise Lee's proposed SOP would seek to amend the Education Act, it would not in fact have been possible to put forward Denise Lee's amendment in part one, uh, because part one is related to the Land Transport Management Act. If members of parliament are of a view that we should consider as a committee amendments to other pieces of legislation, which are related to a regional fuel tax scheme, the only possible avenue for them to do that, if it is contained in a different piece of legislation to the Land Transport Management Act, is to propose it in part two, which she's done. I ask you consider that point when also, Mr Chair, when you consider your future ruling. Thank you. Um, uh, point of order, Kitty Tapu Allen. Uh, Mr Chair, I refer you to 62 two of the speaking orders. And, sir, the, uh, the, the speaking, speaker's rulings, thank you very much. Speaker's rulings are relatively clear that the form of drafting of a bill is, uh, is to be taken into consideration in terms of the length of debate. I refer uh, the, to the remarks of our colleague over the House, Tim McIndoe, that mentioned that um, we've been going... Order. This is a separate point of order, sir. It doesn't sound like it. It so is a separate you point of order, to, sir. You need to come to it now, then. Come to us, sorry? You need to come to exactly what your point of order is. Then. Sir, we've been uh, debating this part two for in excess of two hours. We've seen an extensive range of SOPs that have been tabled. There's nothing in the standing orders that require that every single one of these SOPs are considered in any length. Sir, this part two is a very narrow, I'm on my narrow feet. defined part. I am on my feet. You sit down. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Whether the member likes it or not, the chair is the sole decision maker about when to accept the closure motion. Okay? Um, and for accuracy, it has not been going for two hours. Um, there, there, I'm on my feet. Yeah, don't interrupt. Seriously, don't do that. Um, and, and as I said, that is a matter for the chair to, to decide. There are other ways of addressing that. That is not one of them. I'll take the next call. Um, I call Scott Simpson. Thank you, Mr Chair. Look, uh, this is...